Greetings everyone, thank you for joining me today. In today's presentation, I would like to go over the essentials of statutory accounting principles. In this presentation, I will go over the fundamentals and summarize the fundamentals of statutory accounting principles. And then I will move along and provide a contrast and a compare analysis of U.S. GAAP compared to statutory accounting principles. So let's get started. So today's agenda will be, we will begin with the statutory accounting principles or SAP fundamentals. And then we will move along to the gap to SAP dichotomy. Okay, so let's get started with the SAP fundamentals portion of this presentation. So, I will now provide a overview of SAP, which is Statutory Accounting Principles. So, statutory filings is compulsory for most insurers that operate within the United States and its uh, territories. The Statutory Accounting Principles is developed by the NAIC. The NAIC is, stands for the National Association of Insurance Commissioners. And this is an organi organizational body that is, was created to standardize or attempt to standardize regulatory filings for insurance companies. The NAIC, however, the, the NAIC develops statutory accounting principles, but their authority does not supersede the state's regulatory bodies. As a result of this, there will be some variances and divergence among the states uh, per uh, for the requirements of the statutory filings by the insurance companies. So what, does, what this means is that California, the state of California uh, requirements for statutory filing, filings may differ somewhat compared to the statutory filings of New York. So, statutory accounting principles was designed to and is designed to support state uh, regulatory bodies' uh, solvency regulation of insurance companies. So, solvency uh, regulation is very critical in uh, stat for the insurance company uh, industry and for under statutory accounting principles. And the reason for this is that the regulatory regulatory bodies are seeking to ensure that the policyholder um, obligations that the insurance companies have made are met by the insurance companies, that there's uh, little risk that the insurance companies will not be able to meet these obligations, that they will just go out of business. SAP is based on U.S. GAAP standards, so it's based on the U.S. GAAP framework. The NAIC will convenes and comes together to decide what GAAP standards to allow as SAP standards, uh, what GAAP standards to modify for the purposes to meet their needs for SAP, and what GAAP standards to completely reject for SAP. Okay, so the purpose of SAP is to support solvency regulation by the state regulating bodies. So, uh, this is the purpose of, S of SAP. Uh, the regulators are seeking to ensure that, that the, companies, the insurance companies are solvent, which means that they, they are seeking to ensure that the insurance companies will be able to meet their obligations, their debt obligations, to, uh, primarily to policyholder uh, policyholders of the contracts that they have signed with. As a result of this, there is a balance sheet focus for SAP. Uh, SAP will emphasize the balance sheet and also, also, and they there is a liquidity basis. So, the assets that are permitted to be recorded on the balance sheet are uh, are subjected to a liquidity basis. So the only assets that are permitted on the balance sheet as, as an asset 
are assets that will be available to uh, meet policyholder obligations in the event of an immediate uh, liquid liquidation of the business. So if the business, the insurance company's uh, business liquidated tomorrow, what assets will they be able to use to pay off and meet the obligations uh, made to their policyholders? The SAP uh, conceptual framework is made up of three items. This is conservatism, consistency, and recognition. So this is the framework by which uh, the NAIC creates uh, their statutory accounting principles and how they, th this is the lens that they view their work through. Does it meet conservatism uh, concept? Does it meet consistency? Uh, does it meet recognition concept? So, due to this, due to the emphasized conservative nature of the statutory accounting principles, for instance, uh, certain assets are not permitted to be recorded on the balance sheet, whereas under a gap, it would be permitted. Uh, consistency refers to uh, whether the financials are consistent period over period. Are they, are they comparable? This is required in order to for the state regulating bodies to be able to gain any useful analysis and information by comparing uh, period over period uh, financial development and the financial condition of the insurance company. Uh, recognition refers to how assets and expenses, revenue, etc. are uh, recognized by the insurance company. And uh, this, to go back to um, my concern, to the example provided for conservatism, certain assets are not permitted to be recorded as an asset under SAP, even though they are permitted under U.S. GAAP. So an example of this would be premium receivables past 90 days due. This is considered a non-admitted asset and is instead charged against the surplus account. Another example would be acquisition costs. Under SAP, acquisition costs must be expensed completely and immediately. And this is contrasted to US GAAP, where acquisition costs are capitalized and expensed over the life of the contract. I will now move into the uh, concept of the fundamental concept of non admitted assets. This is a, an important concept under statutory accounting principles. So now, since statutory accounting principles is subjected to a liquidity basis of accounting, it uses a liquidity basis of accounting, it does not permit the recording of certain assets as an asset that will not be able to be used to pay and meet debt obligations for their policyholders. So, as a result of this, uh, certain assets are not included as or not permitted to be recorded as a non as an asset, which includes premium receivables past 90 days due, certain uncollectible reinsurance recoverables past 90 days due in other certain uh, situations, vehicles, office furniture, equipment, and fixtures are considered non-admitted assets. Prepaid expenses are considered non-admitted assets, and other intangible assets can include copyright, patents, etc. Those are considered uh, non-admitted assets, and they're con once again they're considered non-admitted assets because they would not be able to be used to uh, meet the policyholder obligations in the event of a liquidation, say tomorrow, of the of the business. Acquisition costs is another uh, fundamental concept of statutory accounting principles where there is a contrast compared to uh, U.S. GAAP. Now, under SAP, acquisition costs is, uh, m must be expensed completely when it, co when it, when it, occur when it occurs. So, 
if it, for an insurance company, an insurance company that uh, acquires these acquisition costs, they must uh, they must expense it immediately. This is in contrast to U.S. GAAP, where it is capitalized and expensed over the life of the contract. And for any of those who may be unfamiliar with the concept of acquisition costs, acquisition costs refers to the cost to acquire the contract. Uh, this includes commission, co commission costs, it includes also broker fees costs, it also includes underwriting costs and policy insurance costs. The final item that I want to cover as a fundamental part of SAP is the policyholders per surplus. This is a financial statement item. So, under SAP, instead of equity, you have policyholder surplus. This is the SAP, SAP's equivalent to equity. So, like equity, like equity, the policyholder surplus can be uh, got into by taking the difference between assets and liabilities. Policyholder surplus is the acts as the financial cushion of the insurance company. It is also used to fund expansion for the insurance company. Surp um, the policyholder surplus must meet certain minimum uh, regulatory requirements based on the risk that is taken on by the insurance company. Okay, now we'll move on to the next portion of the, this presentation where I will discuss the uh, specific items of contrast, the dichotomy between US GAAP and SAP what the areas where there is a variance between and what the variance specifically is. So on the first concept, a uh, first column, I have the diversion, uh, the, the, the divergence, so the divergence concepts. This next column, I have the treatment under US GAAP. And the final column, the third column, I have the treatment under SAP. So let's get started. The primary purpose for U.S. GAAP is SEC reporting. In contrast, the primary purpose for SAP is State Insurance Department re uh, reporting. The primary end user uh, for U.S. GAAP financials are investors and lenders. SAP's primary end user are state regulati uh, regulating bodies, so the regulators. The primary concern under U.S. GAAP is profitability. This is contrasted to SAP's primary concern being solvency. Will they be able to meet their policyholders obligations? The financial statement focus under U.S. GAAP is income statement as a result of the profitability focus, as a result of the solvency focus of SAP, the primary uh, financial statement focus is balance sheets under SAP. The authoritative literature for U.S. GAAP is the FASB Accounting Standards Cod Codification, or AIC, ASC rather. Under SAP, the authoritative literature is the NAIC Accounting Practice and Procedures Manual, or APNP Manual. The asset valuation view under your GAAP is subjected to the going concern assumption. Under GAAP, companies are assumed to be continuing operations for the foreseeable future. Under SAP, there is a liquidity basis of accounting for, the, uh, for assets. SAP is concerned with whether, if there was immediate closure of the business, this continuation of operations, will they be able to meet their policyholder obligations?
the expense recognition under GAAP is subjected to the matching principle. So there is an effort to match costs to revenues under US GAAP. In contrast to this, SAP practices enhance conservatism. So there may not be necessarily an effort to match expenses to costs. In fact, there may be the opposite effect. They may want uh, the under SAP the there may be an, a desire to actually have expenses hit immediately. An example of this is acquisition costs, where acquisition costs are immediately recognized completely. In this screen, I will go over the divergence among, between the GAAP and STAP's uh, financial accounts. So, to get started, there is the acquisition, acquisition cost. And under GAAP, acquisition cost is deferred and recorded as expense over the life of the contract. Under SAP, acquisition cost is completely and immediately uh, recognized. Premium receivables past 90 days due under US GAAP. This is subjected to judgment and projected collectability. Under SAP, this is considered a non-admitted asset and must be charged against the surplus account on the financial statements. Certain uncollected uh, reinsurance recover uh, recoverables under GAAP. This is again uh, subjected to judgment and projections of collectability. But under SAP, this is considered once again a non admitted asset. Vehicles, office furniture, equipment, and fixtures. Under US GAAP, this is capitalized or expense based on materiality. Under SAP, this is considered a non admitted asset. It's charged against the surplus account. Prepaid expenses under US GAAP, that is uh, recorded as a asset, it's capitalized and then it's amortized. Under SAP, this is once again considered a non-admitted asset. Other intangible assets, so this includes your patents, your copyrights, etc. Under US GAAP, this, is re this can be recorded at cost or less, depending on your situation. SAP, however, um, SAP, however, views these items as a non-admitted asset. These are categorized as non-admitted assets. Bonds. Under US GAAP, bonds are recorded at either fair value or amortized cost. SAP, however, only permits amortized cost. Okay, so that concludes uh, my presentation on the fundamentals of statutory accounting principles and the contrast of SAP and US GAAP. In this screen, I have listed some fantastic resources that you can um, view at your own leisure. Uh, some of the resources that I have used for my presentation includes the NAIC, the III, the Insurance Information Institute, and the IASA, Insurance Accounting and Systems Association. Thank you so much for joining me for this presentation and have a great day.